Here there's a table and it shows you the different types of indicators which exist. On the left, we've got a title and on the right, we've got a definition. These are all different types of indicators and each indicator tracks a particular process or results which is relevant to our intervention. So the input indicator measures the resources and means provided by donors and, and implementing parties. So that basically is like the amount of funds which have been made available, the amount of funds which have been uh, contracted and this place. So this tracks what's going on with the resources that we've got. And it doesn't tell us much more than that. And it's, it's useful if you want to know whether the funds are flowing as, uh, as you would expect. Um, but it doesn't tell you much more than that. Okay, the next indicator are process indicators. And process indicators basically tell you that your activities are happening or the things that should happen in your intervention are actually happening during implementation yeah so these are linked mainly to the execution of activities this means number of number of uh, meetings held number of training events that take place um, and this kind of thing so this tells you that let's say the implementing partner has done all the things that they said they were going to do in a reporting period yeah again useful for tracking the actual the day-to-day -day, uh, ongoings of any project, of any intervention, but it doesn't really give you a lot of information above and beyond that. So if you look at a, a project, I was looking at a project in uh, Jordan uh, last year, and there the, the, the output indicators were uh, uh, numbers of hospitals built. During the implementation, the three-year implementation of this project, yeah, the value of that output was zero. So. And so as an evaluator, I went and said, uh, you haven't built these hospitals. And they said, no, 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 they're going to be built right at the end. Once we commission them, then it's done. And then the value goes from zero to three or two. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so how do you know that you're actually on the right track? And it's well, because we've got all of these process indicators which show us that we've committed, we've signed a contract with the, with the subcontractor, that the subcontractor has actually started building the A&E ward, that these different... Uh, that these, this equipment has been purchased, that we've now got the medical supplies purchased, yeah, and it's all been ongoing. So this shows all of the different processes which are going on. So that at the end of the process, once those processes are complete, yeah, the output indicator will actually then be fulfilled because the hospitals are built and they're operational, they've been taken over and they're working, yeah. So the process indicators will tell you where the, the project is in implementing in its progress towards delivering those outputs, yeah. So that's where process indicators are useful. Yeah, they'll tell you that okay, because otherwise, if you just rely on the output indicator, you would say you haven't done your job because you haven't delivered your output. Yeah, because your output was a built hospital. So maybe that's a useful and, and, and easy way to understand what process indicators are or how useful they can be. Below them, we've got three other different indicate types of indicators, and they're in a green box. The green box are results indicators. Yes. Yeah. When you want to know what results you're getting. Yeah, then you should be very interested in your output indicators, your outcome, outcome indicators, and your impact indicators. If you're interested in the implementation, yeah, then you're looking at your process indicators. Okay, so the output indicators. The output indicators basically signals the degree of achievement of the direct products or services by an activity or set of activities. That means it tells us whether the things that the project said it was going to put in place are have been put in place or not, or how close we are to doing that. Yeah. I mean, they tend to be quite binary, yeah, you know, they are there, it is there, the hospital has been built, the capacity has been increased by, I don't know, 250 people have been trained, yeah, the, the IT system has been installed and is now working, yeah, this kind of thing, so that's an output indicator. Now, the outcome indicator is, is more sophisticated because this should signal whether the change, uh, that we've set out to achieve with our target groups is happening or has happened, yeah. So here we can talk about, and this is where it's important to try and understand like the extent of the change that we're looking to achieve, yeah, because the outcome indicator should be able to tell us that. When you think about the fact that outcomes are generally changes in a particular state or circumstance, yeah, of, of our target group, that means that we have to first of all understand what the state of our target group is prior to our indicator uh, before our intervention started and then the indicator should somehow track how that change is happening and the final set of indicators are impact indicators and these generally these signal whether the changes which we've set out for our final beneficiaries those kind of wider 
changes are actually taking place, yeah. There's also, I put in there context as well, and context indicators are even higher, and these do generally talk about phenomena which are occurring outside of the scope of the project as such, but these are related to, for example, socioeconomic developments, I don't know, environmental issues, or even security issues, so, so indicators which indicate changes in that external environment which may impinge in some way on the overall success of our, our intervention.